went really well, I must admit. I'm not dissatisfied. Um, the good thing about rehearsals is that you do... Um, it, it gets better from rehearsal to rehearsal. So it started out, we had a few problems, like my shoes were too big, my dress was too long, it had to be changed and things like that. So, um, But the sound was always really good and the way a rehearsal works here is that you do a few rehearsals, a few run-throughs and then you go in a viewing room and you you watch it all on a big TV and then you can decide what sort of pyro stuff you want and effects you want to use. And so and up till now we're really, really happy with everything. And you even managed well with your shoes on that staircase? I did, yes. I, I, I've been telling this all morning, actually, when people ask me, are you frightened of falling down the stairs? Um, I, try, I, I, ju I just explain that I think it's more important for me to maybe just steal a look to, to the floor and, and just look down quickly, even if it's not the, the most prettiest look, than, than look straight on and, and maybe risk falling. So I think I'm just going to have a look where my feet are going to land and then things will be okay. You're probably one of the most famous acts in this year's Eurovision Song Contest. Um, do you consider the participation a risk for yourself and your career? No, not really, to be honest. Um, I'm actually sort of thinking about it that life will continue as usual when we when we go home because we do have a lot of gigs planned. I think we're, we're booked up all the summer already. And um, I think the only risk if anything, is that it's not really nice if you were to get a very, very low position. But I'm just, I'm just very hopeful that that won't happen necessarily. We'll have to see. Obviously, I'm uh, crossing my fingers that things will go well. Um, but in general, we, we know we have our fan base out there, and so, so life will continue for us anyway. Um, your father is a famous jazz musician. So wh uh, what, um, what is he actually thinking about the fact that you're performing now on Eurovision, like the most kitschy... TV show that exists. <laughs> He's actually been on Eurovision himself, so I don't think he thinks it's that kitschy. <laughs> <laughs> he um yeah he's a he's um a trombone player and he and well yeah he composes and everything as well and he played in the 1972 Edinburgh Eurovision and so yeah we have that that connects us funny enough and he thinks it's a great opportunity because he knows what a large event this is and you know it doesn't matter how you want to how you want to speak about it it's it really is a, a, an, an extremely big deal and it's a big deal for many many countries and for me as well um, probably the one thing that people notice about you on stage and know about you is your shiny and glamorous dresses. Uh, right. Can you tell a bit more about how they um, are created? Well, in this case, um, this was the first time that I worked with this designer and she she actually, there's a, there's a famous show in Germany that they have in many countries. It's about where celebrities go and learn dances. It's called Let's Dance or So You Think You Can Dance. Um, yeah, and she's the one who does all those beautiful costumes, all those beautiful glittery dresses. And um, so I approached her and I asked her whether she would make the dress for me. And I think she did an amazing job. It was exactly the way I wanted Cool. Have you talked to any other German Eurovision representatives like Lena or Roman? Um? I um, I had the opportunity to meet Lena um, at the Echo Awards uh, this year. And that was really interesting because it's just nice to sit down with someone who's gone through this whole procedure at Eurovision. And we didn't get to speak very long. We did an interview together, but obviously when you have the cameras on you, it's not quite so private that you can talk about everything. Um, but she did say and she did warn me that there's just a lot of chaos, a lot of things going on, a lot of interviews, a lot of journalists. Um, but up to now, it's 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 pretty much been the way she explained. But it's very, I see it as very positive. It's just, it's a lot of positive stress. Um, apart from all that positive stress, are there also some personal things, uh, some more private things that you're doing in Malmö to prepare for your uh, presentation? Not really, to be honest, because life in Malmö isn't private at all, really. You know, the only private time you have is when you're alone in your hotel room. <laughs> and that's all because obviously w our days are planned from morning till evening. We're we're out, at, we're doing rehearsals, we're doing interviews, we're doing shows as well. We've, we did the Eurovision Village last night, we did a little gig. So, um, yeah, there's not much time for private stuff at all. Which expectations do you have in the end? What would make you happy? <sighs> I try and not think about that really to be honest like I don't want to I don't want to be in like last <laughs> I don't think anyone wants that um, it'd just be great to be in any I don't know in the top region somewhere from the middle upwards something like that but I'm not really I'm not really setting myself a proper goal I just really want to try and get the best position I can so we can go back to Germany and have everyone be happy about what we did yeah.